Welcome to Sheer Knowledge TV, the place where we break down complex careers, technologies, and industries so you can understand them clearly. Today, we are redecoding one of the most fascinating and rewarding professions on earth, how to become a pilot, from medical exams, to flight school, to solo flying, to commercial certification, all the way to airline hiring. This is your complete step-by-step -step guide. If you're dreaming of flying professionally, this video will give you the roadmap, the timelines, the costs, the training, and the real challenges most students never hear about. Let's begin your journey into the sky. Becoming a pilot begins long before you ever step into a cockpit. Your very first step is obtaining an FAA medical certificate. Now, this isn't just a simple checkup. There are different classes of medicals depending on your goals. For recreational flyers, a third-class medical is sufficient. But if you plan to fly professionally, you'll need at least a second-class medical. And for those aiming for the captain's seat at a major airline, a first-class medical is required. Most people pass with no problems. However, one of the most common hurdles is color vision deficiency. While colorblind pilots can fly under certain conditions, a professional career in aviation requires you to pass an approved color vision test and meet general fitness standards. Your Aviation Medical Examiner, or AIM, will guide you through the process. A crucial piece of advice, always get your medical exam before investing any significant money in flight training. You don't want any unexpected surprises derailing your dream down the line. Once your medical is sorted, the next big decision is choosing the right flight school. This choice can make or break your journey. Choose correctly, and you'll progress smoothly and efficiently. Choose poorly, and your aviation dream could stall before it even takes off. Broadly, there are two types of flight schools, Part 61 and Part 141. Part 61 schools offer a flexible schedule, allowing you to learn at your own pace. This makes them ideal for working adults or those who can't commit to a full-time schedule. They are also often cheaper. On the other hand, Part 141 schools are highly structured, with a rigid syllabus approved by the FAA. This structure often leads to faster certification and is great for students who can train full-time. However, they tend to be more expensive. Beyond the type of school, you need to consider other critical factors. How far is the school from your home? Consistency is key in flight training, so a long commute can hinder your progress. How many aircraft do they have? More planes mean fewer delays due to scheduling conflicts or maintenance. Speaking of maintenance, always check the quality. Safety must always come first. Also, consider the type of aircraft they use. Do they have modern glass cockpits or older analog gauges? While modern avionics are helpful, great pilots can be trained in any well-maintained aircraft. The best approach is to visit a few schools in person, talk to the instructors, ask current students about their experiences. Your flight school will shape your entire aviation journey, so do your homework. Most students don't realize this, but your instructor matters just as much as your flight school, if not more. A great flight instructor is your mentor, your guide, and your biggest supporter. They should be encouraging, patient, professional, and genuinely passionate about teaching you to fly safely. A poor instructor, on the other hand, can double your training time and cost you thousands of extra dollars. They can turn an exciting journey into a frustrating ordeal. So, do not hesitate to switch instructors early if the chemistry isn't right. A great way to find the right fit is to take introductory flights at multiple schools. Pay close attention to how the instructor teaches, communicates, and evaluates your performance. If someone doesn't feel right, trust your gut. You'll be spending dozens, if not hundreds, of hours together in a very small cockpit. Your relationship with your instructor is paramount to your success, so choose wisely. With your medical school and instructor sorted, your flight training officially begins. A typical lesson is a structured process. It starts with a pre-flight briefing on the ground where you'll discuss the day's objectives. Then you'll perform a walk-around inspection of the aircraft. 
In the air, you'll practice maneuvers with your instructor first demonstrating and then you attempting them. This could include straight and level flight, climbs, descents, turns, and of course, takeoffs and landings. You'll also learn emergency procedures, navigation, and radio communication. After the flight, you'll have a post-flight debrief to discuss what went well and what needs improvement. One of the most memorable moments in any pilot's life is their first solo flight. This is a major milestone. Once your instructor is confident in your ability to handle the aircraft safely on your own, they will endorse your logbook, get out of the plane, and send you up to fly alone for the very first time. This usually happens between 10 and 25 hours of training. The feeling of taking off by yourself, knowing you are solely responsible for that aircraft, is emotional, exciting, and absolutely unforgettable. But flying isn't just about stick and rudder skills. You also need to study for your written knowledge test. The private pilot exam consists of 60 multiple choice questions and you have two hours to complete it with a minimum passing score of 70%. Study hard for this, as the knowledge you gain here is the foundation for all your future flying. The final step to earning your private pilot certificate is the check ride. This is essentially your final exam, and it's conducted by a designated pilot examiner, or DPE. The check ride has two parts, an oral exam and a flight test. The oral exam can last anywhere from one and a half to three hours. The examiner will grill you on topics like aviation, weather, regulations, flight planning, safety procedures, and emergency decision-making. They want to ensure you have the theoretical knowledge to be a safe pilot. Following the oral portion, you'll head out to the aircraft for the flight test. This usually takes about an hour. You'll be asked to demonstrate various maneuvers, including takeoffs, landings, recovery from stalls, navigation, and overall aircraft control. If you perform to the required standards in both parts, the examiner will congratulate you, and you will officially become a private pilot. Once you have your private pilot certificate, you can fly for fun. But if you want a career, the journey is just beginning. The next crucial step is getting your instrument rating or IR. This certification allows you to fly in low visibility conditions, like clouds or fog, relying solely on your aircraft's instruments. For any aspiring airline pilot, the instrument rating is one of the most important qualifications you will earn. It's where your flying becomes incredibly precise and professional. You'll learn to follow specific procedures, interpret complex navigation systems, and trust your instruments completely. The training process is similar to your private pilot certificate. You'll need to pass another written test and complete another check ride, this time focused entirely on instrument flying skills. With your instrument rating in hand, the next milestone is your commercial pilot certificate. This is the license that allows you to legally be paid to fly. To qualify for the commercial certificate, you'll need to have logged at least 250 flight hours or 190 hours if you're at a Part 141 school. The training for this certificate involves a deeper understanding of aerodynamics, more advanced maneuvers flown to tighter tolerances, and an even greater emphasis on precision and safety. The written exam is harder, and the check ride is stricter. The examiner will hold you to a much higher standard because you are now aiming to become a professional. Once you pass your commercial check ride, a whole new world of aviation jobs opens up. You can finally start earning money as a pilot. Before you can fly for a major airline, however, there's one more major hurdle. The Airline Transport Pilot Certificate, or ATP. This is the highest level of pilot certification. To even be eligible, you need a minimum of 1,500 flight hours. You'll also need to complete multi-engine training and obtain other specific endorsements. So, how do you get from 250 hours to 1,500? This phase is called time building. Most pilots build these hours by working in various entry-level aviation jobs. One of the most common paths is becoming a certified flight instructor or CFI and teaching others to fly. Other jobs include towing banners, aerial surveying, 
flying for sightseeing companies, piloting for skydiving operations, or ferrying aircraft from one location to another. Eh? This time-building phase can take anywhere from two to five years, depending on how frequently you fly. After you've logged the required hours and earned your ATP certificate, you can finally start applying for those coveted airline jobs. So, let's talk about the big question. What does all of this cost? The investment is significant, but let's break it down. In the US or Canada, you can expect to pay around $75 to $200 for your medical certificate. Your private pilot license will likely cost between $15,000 and $20,000. The instrument rating adds another $8,000 to $12,000. Getting your commercial pilot license and building hours to $250 can range from $55,000 to $100,000, depending on the school and how you build time. If you choose to become a flight instructor, that certificate will cost about $5,000. Finally, the ATP certification course is around $5,000, though this is often paid for by the hiring airline. All in, you're looking at a total investment of anywhere from $80,000 to $150,000. It's a substantial amount, but for thousands of pilots each year. The career growth, competitive salary, and unique lifestyle make it a worthwhile investment. Becoming a pilot is challenging, expensive, and incredibly demanding but it's also one of the most rewarding careers in the world. If you stay consistent, choose the right school, find a great instructor, and train smart, the sky truly is the limit. This is Sheer Knowledge TV, bringing knowledge closer to you. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode.